In this video, we're going to see how we can add, edit, or remove fields from the checkout page in WooCommerce. Hi, my name is Stratos, and I'm constantly producing video tutorials about WordPress. Please subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. This is my checkout page in the WooCommerce website that I have, and this is handled by my theme, which is the Cadence theme. Maybe in your website it looks a little bit different because you have another theme installed. Also, there are some builders that can edit this page, and maybe you have created something different with the page here in the checkout page, but you want to edit those fields. We're going to do that using a free plugin and let's go into the plugins. Let's go to add new. And as you can see, it already is deleted here because I made some tests and let's type here, checkout. And the first plugin that we're going to see here is the checkout editor. I'm going to hit install now. And it has over 300,000 active installations with five to five stars here. Let's go and activate that. And once it's activated, we're going to find it under the WooCommerce inside the checkout form. And here you will see that it has three tabs, the checkout fields, the advanced settings and the premium feature. The advanced settings is basically some checkboxes that you can have and it will basically overwrite other settings or other plugins maybe if something is not working correctly. So just go here and uh, check those if something is not working right out of the box. Then we have the premium feature where you can read about the premium version of this. And if we go and upgrade to the premium version, we will go into the themehigh.com where you will find that the single site license is 49 bucks for one year. Five sites is 99 and 25 sites is 199 bucks for one year of update and support. Let's close that. In the premium version, you will find that it has display condition. It has more uh, fields that you can add here. The radio is in the free version. The checkbox is not, it's in the pro. The checkbox group, it's in the pro. Date picker, time, file, upload, heading, label, multi-select. All of those are in the pro version. And we have also, of course, the display condition. We have prices fields, and there you will you can do more things in the premium version. So uh, let's go back to the checkout fields. And here you will also see that it has three tabs, the billing fields, the shipping fields, and the additional fields. If we go to the front end, we will see that the billing details is basically the billing fields here. Also, we have the shipping fields, which is basically if you check here that it says ship to a different address, you will see every field inside here, it will be repeated inside here. This is the field, uh, the uh, shipping field. And then we have the additional field, which is down here at the bottom, which is the order notes. If we uncheck here, we, we also see, we will also see the order notes, and this is inside the additional field. So uh, these are the three tabs that we have here. Let's go to the billing fields and this is how it looks. Everything that you can see here, every line in inside here is a different field inside the checkout box here, inside the checkout page. So we have the first name, last name, company name, country and region, street address. And as you can see here, we have everything inside the label here. First name, last name, company name, country, region and apartment. Apartment is because I changed some things. So we have the apartment here. Let's refresh that and we will see the apartment here. Okay, apartment here because it was from my previous test. But as you can see, everything that is inside here corresponds to another field. Correspond to another field. Now, let's go and uh, grab something and move it. If you want to edit that to grab something and change uh, its place, you have to go over the three lines here where your mouse will be across and you just grab something and move it around. So I'm going to the apartment and I'm going to put that on top. Once I do that, I just click Save Changes. And now let's go here and refresh the page and we will see that now the apartment is on top. If I want to remove, I can just click here and click Disable or click the Edit and uncheck the Enable here and Save Changes. It's the same thing. And just click Save Changes one more time. Remember that because it will not be saved and then refresh. Now the apartment is removed at all. So there are some cases that you don't want to ship uh, into uh, and you don't want an address here because you don't have uh, products that are uh, shipping products. You just want to sell products that are services or products that can be downloaded. So you don't want here to have an address. What you can do, you can go and check everything from here. So we want to check the billing 
the country, the billing address, the city, the state, the billing postcode, the billing phone, maybe, maybe not. No, let's leave it that here. So those uh, fields, I'm going to hit disable and I'm going to hit save changes. After that, I'm going back to the front end and I'm going to refresh as soon as this is saved. Okay, and now once I click refresh here, I will see that everything is removed. Now remember, of course, you have to remove also from the SIP to a different address. So I have to go also here in the shipping fields and remove those fields with the same uh, process. If I hit the remove instead of the disable, th those fields will be removed here. Uh, you can do whatever you want. If you are sure that you will not have products that are going to be shipped, you can remove those fields. But if you have products now that are downloadable uh, or services and after a year or something, you may have uh, products that can be shipped, just disable those and leave them inside here. Now, let's edit a field to see what options we have. So let's go to the phone that says here and let's edit that. And we'll see that we have the type, which is phone. We have the name, which is billing phone. This is how it handles, the WooCommerce handles uh, the field. It has the label, which is the name of the field in the front end. We have the placeholder, which is some uh, some text inside the field. So this it's information for the visitors. We have the default value. We have the class validation. So this is basically a phone and it will be validated as a phone and it will say an error message if it's not. And we have the required and enabled. So it's required field and it's of course enabled. And it says here display in emails, display in order detail pages. As you can see, I cannot edit all of those fields because this is something that is basically uh, created from WooCommerce. If you want, just uh, disable that and create uh, another phone number yourself and change the settings that cannot be changed here if you want to do that. So what I want now to do is add another field. I'm going to hit add field here and let's go for a text but let's see what we have here. We have the password where you can set a password, email of course which you can set an email. We have phone select text area and radio. The text of course is a simple line with where you can type anything. Uh, the select is a, a list that it's a drop down list and you can check whatever you want from the list. Only one thing can be checked. Then we have the radio, which is basically a, a, a list with some uh, cycles that you can check, cycle boxes that you can check. And oh, again, one uh, uh, option can be selected. And then we have the text area, which is basically a box with more lines. This is the notes here. This is the box, the, uh, uh, the text area. After that, we have the name, which is billing and underscore, and this uh, is something that you can type after, and this must be unique, so you cannot have the same name in two different things, in two different fields. And of course, the label is the name, and the placeholder is the info inside. So we're going to go for a text, and here we're going to go, let's go for the label first, and this will be the invoice number. So basically, I want to have something that can, my clients can go and put if they want an invoice uh, so invoice number on, or invoice tax or what is called tax number I don't know so let's go for uh, invoice number and here you can set billing underscore and here invoice number or invoice tax or whatever you want let's go for number here Okay, then we have the placeholder where you can type uh, if you want something for the visitor to read. So type here, this is optional, type here the tax number, tax number for invoices. I don't know, something. Default value, class, if you want to style it a little bit. And then we have the validation if we have an email, phone, post, code, state or number. If you select email, then it will wait for the email to be written. So it requires the at and then the domain name and then the dot and what is after the domain name. Of course, your visitor may type something that it's not uh, correct and it will get uh, something that says type your correct email, but maybe he will just type a false email. Uh, you cannot be sure that he will always have a correct email here but this is a validation that it is required some things the at and the domain and the dot and whatever comes after that and here is the phone that it only can have numbers and not letters 
After that, we have the required enabled display in emails and display in order page. Let's delete that here. Okay, and then we have optional, of course. It's not required because uh, it's invoice number. Or not all my clients will want an invoice. And then I want that to be enabled. I want that to be displayed in the emails that uh, the WooCommerce will send. And I want that to be enabled and viewable in the order detail space. So let's save that. And as you can see, it says now that uh, name ID must have lowercase, uppercase, and this is the one that I screwed up. So let's go and put that an underline. Let's save that. And let's hit save changes after that. No, first let's grab that and put that on top after the billing company and let's save changes. And now I can go into the front end. I'm going to refresh. So I have now the company name and the invoice number optional. Now, as you can see, it's one line under the other. I don't have this uh, one next to the other. If I want to do that, I can go and edit the name and I will see the class here that says form row first. I can copy that and I can go into the company name. I can go and put here into the class form row first save and close and then here in the last name edit grab that form row last go into the invoice edit class form row last save changes and save changes again and now i can refresh and i will see now that these two fields are next to each other let's wait and as you can see, one is next to the other. Now, if I had the pro version, I could have a checkbox that it would say, uh, do you want an invoice? And the visitor would check the box and then the invoice number would appear. But since we don't have the pro version, we will have to make something like this. So this is the way that you can handle the uh, fields here. So that's how you can edit, add or remove fields. Now, remember that you have to keep the plugin enabled and activating inside your WooCommerce store. If you disable the plugin or if you remove it entirely, you will see that everything will go back to the default setting. So you will have all the fields that you had before and those that you have added yourself will be removed. So remember to keep the plugin enabled and activated. Uh, both, uh, both of those are two th same things. Uh, keep it uh, activated in your website and everything will work just fine. So this is how you edit all those fields and remove and add. Uh, I hope you liked the video. Please give me a thumbs up if you did. Uh, remember to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye, guys.